I'm Dr. Catelyn Tucker, and I wanted to show math teachers how to take their linear agenda and plan a station rotation. So there's a strategy that I use when I work with teachers, I used it myself as a teacher, that I think of as going horizontal with our linear agenda, which means when we have that normal kind of whole group teacher-led agenda that we want to write in the board, we take that agenda, we tilt it on its side, and we pull apart the discrete parts of the lesson or the different learning activities in the agenda to create our station rotation. Now math is a little different. For English teachers, we might be able to look at a single agenda for one day, tilt it on its side, and create a station rotation. Math builds on each lesson, and so we have to look at a minimum two lessons at a time, or even our week's worth of math lessons to use this strategy. So as a coach going into math classrooms frequently, this is a common flow I see in linear agendas in math classes. So the teacher is going to start with a warm-up question, maybe go through it with the group. They might have kind of a guided review or self-check of the homework so students Students can kind of check their own work for accuracy. Often they then turn that into the teacher. The teacher transitions into a mini lesson, which is the direct instruction for the concept or process that day, and then release students into practice problems and often go around the room kind of checking in with students who might need additional support or have questions. So if we're going to reimagine this as a station rotation, we're going to have to think about multiple lessons and how to combine the elements to make it work in this rotation. So if you take that homework review where students are checking their homework for accuracy in that warm up, that could be a station on its own. So we could give students an answer key for a set of practice problems or some deconstructed problems that have been worked out with answers kind of in annotated in a different color. So students on their own or with a partner can take that homework, look at the answer cue or the, the broken down examples that have been worked out by the teacher and check their own work. Now, I always encourage my math teachers to pair this with a reflective practice. What did students learn about themselves from going through this self-assessment? What, what questions do they struggle with? What are they not understanding? Where might they need more support? Where are they feeling confident? Where are they seeing their own growth? So whether we have them do that kind of individually in writing, whether it's conversational, I like to kind of anchor this in a math notebook where students are really documenting and thinking deeply about their learning all the time, but they're capturing it in one place. So if teacher wants to look at the homework for a week, they're really just looking at that math notebook. And it could be an online math notebook or an offline math notebook, or maybe we give students the agency to decide what would be the best medium for you to capture your reflections, your self-assessments, your answers to warm-up questions. Now, the warm-up question has to be for the next day's lesson, right? Because some students are going to start at the teacher-led, they're going to go to the practice problems, and they're going to hit that warm-up potentially last. So if they're doing a warm-up in a station, it has to be for the next lesson. But the beauty of that is the teacher can look at the student's answers to the warm-up and use that formative assessment data to design their groups for the next day's explicit instruction in the teacher-led station, hopefully grouping them more effectively so they can think about the problems that they're focusing on in that teacher-led station, maybe choosing practice problems at different levels of rigor and complexity for different groups, and making sure they have specific scaffolds on hand for students who might need more or less support. Then we have that teacher um, differentiated direct instruction in that small group setting. And again, here's that opportunity for us to be really thoughtful about the problems we're focusing on, the levels of scaffolds and supports we're providing for students, and it's an opportunity to guide that initial practice as students try to take what they heard in the explicit teaching and start to work with some example problems. Then the third part is the actual practice and review with the practice problems. However, since some students are starting in this station for the day, these can't be the practice problems tied to the direct instruction. These would be practice problems 
from the day before. So they are revisiting the content from the day before and doing those practice problems here. So that allows the teacher to move from that linear whole group lockstep lesson to that station rotation where they're able to differentiate that direct instruction to hopefully more effectively meet students' needs. And they're also building in that self-assessment, that reflective practice, really helping students to develop their metacognitive muscles. And for anybody who's interested in a math notebook and the kinds of activities we could build into, say, an offline station to get students really diving into their mathematical thinking and reasoning, that is going to be available on my blog at CatlinTucker.com. Thank you.